Can, can. Shalom, family. Uh, my name is Dr. Maria Yoel. Uh, today, we will be discussing uh, the impacts of fear and how fear impact what it actually is and how it actually impacts the body, how it impacts the mind, and how it actually uh, caught, you know, impacts our behavior. And also talking about the things that we should fear and the things we shouldn't fear. And finally, we're going to talk about ways of combating fear. Uh, how we can get rid of unnecessary fear. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And I brought along with me a good brother of mine, Maurice Shaleen, who's going to speak toward the end of this presentation on uh, ways of uh, combating fear with preparation. So it's a pleasure to be here. So uh, shalom, shalom, family. Not sure whether I should uh, move forward with the uh, presentation. Yes, please do. Okay, 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 good, 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 okay. So uh, again, my uh, giving all praise to the Most High first and foremost. Uh, again, my name is uh, Dr. Maury Yoel, and I'll be giving uh, some information today on uh, what fear is and, uh, and basically uh, the things we should fear. And this is a very important topic because today we are uh, undergoing a state where a lot of people are in fear and in panic uh, because of a lot of dilemma today. Um, what is fear? Uh, fear is a, a discomforting feeling uh, caused by the perception of threat, um, of danger, no matter whether that danger is real or imagined. And it is said that people fear uh, what is unknown. Um, and this is true to a sense. Um, familiar, familiarities create uh, comfort. You know, you're comfortable in areas where you go to family reunions, uh, to settings in which you know people. And so uh, when you are in unfamiliarity of things you're not knowledgeable of, it creates a sense of, of discomfort. Um, fear is, it causes very emotions uh, which are triggered by a number of, uh, of things that impact us psychologically, uh, psychosocially, as well as emotionally. Uh, one of the things that people don't talk about when they're discussing fears is that uh, fear can also be positive. And we're going to discuss that in a little bit. Uh, fear, it can be good when you are necessarily fearing those things or those elements that are harmful to you. Uh, a perfect example of that um, is uh, unhealthy food. Uh, we should have a fear of uh, eating those things that are going to cause us uh, cancer, uh, that are going to bring on cancer. Uh, we should have a fear of those things that are going to uh, bring on diabetes. Uh, we should have a fear for those things that cause heart attacks. So fear can be a good uh, uh, emotion or a good feeling, especially when it is used uh, in a good way to help prevent us from those dangers uh, that come upon our body. Um, I'm reminded of a, a Psalm, uh, Psalm 118. It says, the most high is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. And so there are some things that we're told not to fear, but then there's some things we're told to fear when we read Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, we are told to fear the most high and keep his commandments, his instructions, for this is the the whole duty of man. And so there are some positives and negatives to things that we should fear and things that we should not fear. Um, unhealthy fears, uh, they cause anxiety. And anxieties are a more serious condition. Uh, and common, it's just like, for instance, we are used to what we call PTSD, which is a, a post-traumatic stress disorder or a post-traumatic slave disorder. Some people are, are used to that new philosophy. And these are uh, fears to those things that we have gone through in our life that have imprinted uh, negative reactions or negative uh, interactions in our life. And these are things that become impressed in our mind that we don't want to go through again. And those are, are harmful to us. Um, if you are experiencing anxiety is a disorder um, that is different than uh, regular, regular anxiety or regular stress that people, common stressors that people go to. And uh, common phobias are things like uh, arachnophobia, uh, which is a, a phobia of uh, spiders. 
Uh, then you have uh, what they call uh, nicetophobia, which is a, a phobia of darkness. Uh, you have uh, dentophobia, which is a phobia of dentists. You have um, acrophobia, which is a phobia of heights. And so some of those are common phobias. Um, another common phobia that, or anxiety that sometimes we face today are uh, financial phobias, uh, financial burdens, uh, not knowing whether you're going to have your bills paid, uh, and the stress of keeping lights on, things of that nature, and feeding your family, uh, work performance stresses, you know, at your job. Uh, stresses go as far as being, uh, you know, uh, sex, sexual stress, uh, the stress impacted on unhealthy eating and the impacts that, you know, uh, the, uh, the performance of sex may have in your marriage. And so these are some stressors, um, even spiritual expectations. These are some stressors that we go through that are common stressors and phobias. Um, and unhealthy anxiety are something like agoraphobia. Um, agoraphobia is the fear of open spaces. Um, people who suffer from agoraphobia uh, need to see an exit. They need to see that there's a way out of an open area where they, can, where they can flee. And so people that suffer from that particular phobia, it can become a stressful uh, type of anxiety. Uh, some others are um, acrophobia. Um, you got, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, what they call entomophobia, which is the fear of insects. And so these are some uh, phobias that people go through, and they they actually label them anxiety disorders. And these fears are created by the experience or education of fear due to negative resulting impacts on things. Um, I'll give you another uh, phobia that is really common in some of us is the phobia of using drugs. Uh, a lot of us grow up and we may see people who have uh, been strung out on drugs and seen the impact that it's had on uh, destroying families, uh, destroying generations. And so for those of us that are educated or know about that, we develop a, a, a phobia against using drugs. And so these are just uh, some, some common phobias and things that we go through. Um, one of the uh, other common responses to uh, some of these fears is something that we call a uh, fight or flight. And so fighting or flighting is a, a common way that people uh, react or handle phobias. If you uh, have a fear of something, either you, you gain the strength to fight it or you flight from it. And so another concept that people don't talk about when they talk about fight or flight is they don't talk about um, people who actually freeze. There are some anxieties that you neither fight, you neither flight, but you actually freeze. And so those are some other responses uh, to fears. Um, we're going to talk about the part of the body. And I have a, a picture of a brain here I like to use sometimes. We have what they call like uh, 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 frontal lobes, prefrontal lobes. And one of the parts of the, of the brain that actually uh, deals with anxiety and fears is the amygdala. And what the amygdala does is it causes your brain to, uh, to, to utilize or strengthen or to weaken those areas of your body that have nothing to do uh, with uh, having the development to conquer fear such as um, it may lessen the muscles and the blood toward your intestines. You don't need your intestines to, to conquer fear. And that's how some people feel uh, a, a, a feeling in their gut of queasiness because you got the blood flow going to other areas of your body. Um, so the amygdala actually uh, helps the body or helps the brain to respond to certain things. And it helps us to uh, focus on uh, those presenting dangers. And it also stores these dangers uh, in our memory. So how does a bunny know that to be afraid of a snake? There are certain genes that are passed down and DNA passed down where it had to be in a bunny that was eaten by a snake or bitten by a snake and saw those dangers and you begin to pass them down. And so some anxiety and fears are passed down by word of mouth, by education, Others are passed down through our DNA. Um, you ever wonder why sometimes even uh, you have birds and in certain areas 
you have it where birds will actually uh, feel comfortable coming close to humans, you see? And you will have it sometimes where birds are uncomfortable. They, they, they flee, they, they flight because they know that there's gonna be some uh, imposing danger. And so uh, the amygdala is that part of our brain that uh, uh, makes us aware of presenting danger and it stores it in our memory. Um, as you respond, you res a lot of us respond to similar or familiar dangers. Why do we respond so fast when we see fire? Why do we respond so fast when we see snakes? Some of these are oftentimes familiar experiences or familiar dangers that we have been uh, exposed to. Um, and so this is why uh, we become less afraid because of we know that there are certain dangers that may not cause us a threat. Okay, uh, the miseducation. By miseducating people about false dangers and false consequences and repeating this false education over and over again increases false fears in people. And now we're talking about how we program fear. Um, and so how they program fear is giving us false education uh, by giving us false, um, you know, uh, 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 revealing to us false things that will happen to us. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, in spirituality, you have this thing where people talk about sometimes heaven or hell. And so if you have some people believing that if they do certain things, that there's going to be a, 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 a forever hell somewhere burning with fire, then you're going to get people responding and fearing certain things. Uh, same thing with people uh, that have a fear about eating uh, insect blood. You know, uh, there's an ingredient called cochineal or carmine, and that is used as a, co a coloring. And if people are fa afraid of insect blood, then they will stay away from those things. And so there are certain uh, elements in which we are programmed to fear certain things, and we see a lot of that happening today. Uh, we have subliminal messages. Uh, the subline is that level of understanding in the mind. It's called the line. The line is that level that people are generally able to perceive things and understand things. Then they call it subline. Subline meaning underneath the line. That means that things that are uh, coming into your conscious, uh, 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 you know, through the back door. Uh, things that are being programmed into your mind, oftentimes without your knowledge. And so there are a lot of uh, subliminal messages that are sent uh, to our mind concerning miseducation. And this reinforces fears. And so it's just like a, a video that I saw lately uh, where they have people who are uh, infected with the coronavirus and they're showing that testing sites are being over flooded. They're showing that hospitals are being over flooded. And what this does through the media is people are looking at the fear of something happening to them that they have to, you know, they're not going to be able to go somewhere and get treated. You know, but when you look at some of the uh, new education that's coming forth, you have people showing videos of hospitals that are empty, uh, testing sites that are completely abandoned. And so education is one of those things that actually helps us, uh, proper education helps us to counteract negative fears, whereas what helps to instill false fears or negative fears is giving people uh, miseducation subliminally, as well as over and over and constantly, constant and constant again. Um, help, unhelpful thoughts, such as thinking everyone is, is thinking about you. Um, people are constantly worried. It creates worry. And so these are also some fears that uh, have impacts on us when you are constantly concerned about what people uh, feel about you. And that comes from having a low self-esteem. So having an increased Self-esteem also help, helps to conquer a uh, fear. Um, I want to talk about some of the uh, things and that fear or anxiety actually does also to uh, parts of the body. Um, having having fear or on the body, what it does is it increases your breathing. Uh, fear also for people that are, are have hair on you, you can feel it physically. You'll feel your hair stand up on your arm. Um, it, slow, it slows and shuts down the functions 
that are necessary for survival. It increases those functions that are needed for survival, uh, such as your memory, your strength, things of that nature. Um, our heart rate increases and our blood flows uh, also increase uh, during certain impacts or certain experiences of, of fear. Um, fear is increased by exposure or it increases the, and weakens the immune system. That's also one of the uh, negatives uh, to fear. Um, and I'm gonna talk just a little bit about uh, some of those impacts that fear has about survival. Um, when you have those areas of your body that are needed for survival, such as your sight, uh, your memory, you know, it's important that fear kicks those things in where you can use it correctly. Um, oftentimes, if a person, you, you ever notice like, for instance, if a dog is coming your way, a pit bull is coming your way barking and it pops a chain and get, gets loose and it starts chasing after you, you know, you, you begin to develop uh, extra strength. You know, you develop uh, 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 the anxiety releases uh, endorphins and it releases uh, areas of blood flow into your muscles. And that's how people get increased strength. Um, that strength doesn't just come out the blue. It comes from the release of hormones uh, into the brain and then the brain releasing uh, increased blood flow through the body. And now you have, you're, you're able to run faster than you probably could before. You're able to think a lot more quicker than you probably normally would. And so this is uh, how uh, fear can uh, impact the body and releases uh, different things to ha cause you to respond having good fear at good times. So fear isn't always uh, a bad thing to possess. Uh, it's important to have fear for those proper things in our life. Um, however, it's, it's important for us to stay away from those things in, the, in, in certain media that gives us miseducation about fears. Um, again, we are told to fear the creator. That is an important thing to fear because you fear the creator, you fear yourself. Um, you, fear, you fear to violate laws and instructions that are going to keep your life in line. Um, when you fear a uh, man, now you're feeling a lesser power. You're fearing people uh, for, uh, because of your negative thoughts that they are stronger than you, that they have control over you. And that's why fear is indoctrinated in our minds today. We're taught fear. We're taught fear through television, through radio, uh, through social interactions. Why do people want to teach us fear? Because if people can get you to fear, then they can control you. They can control what you buy from the store. They can control how you treat your family. They can control how you treat yourself. They can control where you put your energy at. Fear can also be a control technique. Mental enslavement, fear is one of the techniques used by people who try to get people involved in mental enslavement. It's another tactic, fear. We know the different things that they used to do to us as slaves to create fear in our minds and in the minds of our people. And that has been uh, uh, passed down to us generation to generation. We have a fear of opening businesses. We feel like if we are, uh, uh, work for somebody, we will have more stability. So we are, we are taught over and over again to good, good jobs, uh, uh, to work for the system, to do different things, because it's going to be stability in that. And then what we're taught is to fear our own self, to fear that if you came up with a business ideal, it won't be successful. Uh, we, we are taught to fear many things that keep us down from uh, fulfilling our potential or coming out with the best of our abilities. And so we have to be aware of these false fears uh, that are, are oppressed upon us. Fear those things that are going to cause you to protect yourself. Fear those things that are going to cause you to avoid danger. Don't fear those things that are going to cause you not to be successful and to have uh, uh, increased low self-esteem and things of that nature. How do you conquer fear is by educating yourself. We have to educate ourselves on whether a danger is real or not. We educate ourselves to find out whether what we are told to be afraid is this really going to have the negative impact that people are telling us is going to have. And so education is one of the things 
that conquers fear. Fear is more of a disease that is killing people today than COVID-19. Fear is the, 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 the disease that is causing us to really, uh, is killing people by the millions, you see? And so COVID is killing people, what, by the hundreds, maybe the thousands, but you have fear of killing people by the millions. And so uh, we as a people uh, should be encouraged to no longer fear those things uh, that are going to uh, cause our body problems. You know, stress affects your immune system. It makes you sick. You know, have stress and have a uh, fear towards those things that are going to help you to be better. You know, fearing to uh, uh, be unsuccessful. You know, that's a good fear. You know, feel fear. Don't even feel fail failure all the time because you're going to fail in life. That's a natural thing sometimes. And so uh, this uh, short speech, and I don't have a lot of time, is to really give some education on uh, what fear is, how fear impacts the body, uh, the things that we should fear, things we shouldn't fear. And again, family, just be encouraged to uh, continually to educate yourself about fears, about uh, things you should fear and shouldn't fear. These things are, are, are vitally important, especially today. I mean, it's interesting that they, even with COVID, they're telling people that this is an airborne uh, disease or an airborne, you know, ailment. Well, it's always been uh, airborne. But when you heighten certain things and you put it out there, it makes people create a fear. You know, you have people, now, well, now it's important to understand this, especially when we talk about COVID-19, is that no matter why something came about, whether it's uh, man-made, lab made or whatever it may be, it has impacted all of us and that's a fact. However, when we have fear for the creator and understand that we have the power to grow food, we have power to think for ourselves, we have power to move about, we have power to conquer anything, then it, it lessens the fear that we have and the power that we put into the hands of those trying to get us to fear. You know, we have to learn to empower ourselves. We are made in the image of Elohim. And being made in the image of Elohim means you are made in the image of power. And the more, but in Psalms 82 and 6, it says, you know, I have made you Elohim, but you shall die like men. And that's because the less power we possess, the less knowledge we possess, the more we become futile, the more we become less Elohim-like. We're made in the image of Elohim, meaning that we are powerful. If you're made in the image of a car, more than likely you're a car. If you're made in the image of a truck, more than likely you're a truck. And so we were made in the image of Elohim. It says in the image of God in, in, in uh, English, but in Hebrew, we know that that's Elohim. Uh, Elohim means that you are made in the image of power. And so a person, that, a being that is a power, gravitates more of that power by gravitating knowledge. Knowledge is what? Knowledge is power. The more we lessen our knowledge and awareness, now we are removing from our Elohim state. Now we're moving more into our futile state of deteriorating and falling from what we would call falling from heaven. And so we don't want to fall from that state of being made in the image of Elohim that we are created. We want to continue to increase our knowledge and increasing our knowledge will help us to conquer unnecessary fears. And also we want to we, we want to watch what our, our ears, our ears are, are listening to. Watch what your eyes are exposed to, because these are things that become part of who you are. A lot of fears that once again are given to us subliminally. And so if things are touching our subline, coming underneath our, our subconscious, then you know sometimes you can't fight those things because now they become part of your thought process. So we have to be careful of what we expose ourselves to. And you should see it, they're doing tests now that are showing how people are responding to even COVID-19. People that are exposed to the media are responding with more fear. People that are not exposed to uh, many of the false fears of the media, are they have less fear to it and they have more knowledge to creating solutions. Fear doesn't help you to become knowledgeable creating solutions. Fear just increases your ability to run away to uh, uh, give power to the thing causing you to fear. 
again, we conquer that by getting knowledge, educating ourselves on those things that we should truly fear, those things that really present a, a danger to us. And so I hope there's something that I, I said uh, that has given some enlightenment on a fear, what it does to our body, uh, the programming of fear that is being constantly put on us as a people, and how we can combat that fear with knowledge. Uh, I brought along with me uh, a very special brother of mine, uh, Maurice Shaleen, who is a survival expert. I like to call him the National Geographic of Hebrew Israelite culture. And he's going to talk about uh, some of the things dealing with uh, preparation. Preparation has to do with knowledge. And like I said, knowledge conquers fear. Preparation conquers fear. If a person is uh, fears that the supermarkets are going to close, but yet you have knowledge of how to filter water, you're not going to be afraid of not having water come out your faucet. You're going to know how to get water. A person that is familiar with planting and the different things out there and the elements that they can eat, they're not going to fear when a supermarket's closed because they're going to be aware of the environment around them that they can eat from. And so these are just different uh, examples of how uh, knowledge conquers fear. But if we let that fear overtake us, and we're like, oh, man, they're going to close the stores. People are buying up this, that, and the third. And now we start uh, filling into that, getting into our mind about that, letting that uh, create stress, create anxiety. And now what do we do? We, 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 we freeze up. And we start to lower our immune system. And we start to change our behavior and hurt and damage ourselves. And these are things that happen when we allow uh, fear that is unwarranted to come into our minds. Your mind is where everything starts from. Proverbs says that. It says, guard your mind more than anything that you guard. For from your mind, everything comes into life. And think about it. Fear happens first in your amygdala, in your mind. You see fear. You hear it. You see it. You smell. You can even smell fear. If you smell smoke, you know that there's a danger somewhere. And so our senses and our elements all happen in our mind. Everything starts in your mind. And so that's why I love our scriptures because it talks about protecting your mind. Remember I said, watch the things that you uh, expose yourself to the things you see, hear, so forth and so on. So at this time, I'd like to save a, a few minutes uh, to be given to a dear brother of mine, Maurice Shaleen, who is going to talk about uh, some of the knowledge preparation of survival that we should do today to help uh, uh, fight against the unnecessary fears that we are being uh, taught, that are being spread on us, that are being put on us, that we are being educated with. And so hopefully his knowledge that he brings forth can also help to this, uh, this lecture on fear and how we as a people can conquer this unnecessary fear and not ca uh, cause it to be uh, dangerous to us. But now I do want to say before he comes on, and that's this, there are certain anxieties that aren't caused by uh, current fears. Meaning if you see a snake, yes, you should fear. But sometimes people have, uh, psychological disorders in which they begin to fear when there is no present danger. And so if you are a person that are being uh, 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 stressed or plugged with uh, constant fears where there is no current or present danger, I'm going to encourage you to seek counseling. Uh, there are many avenues out there to help you to get over these anxieties. And one of the key elements to help get over Many anxieties is something that we call cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, CBT. CBT has been really helpful. Um, there's a lot of herbs out there. And so there are a lot of solutions that can help the people who are now uh, 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 going through, you know, those rough times in which they are still going through PTSD, uh, through post-PSSD, uh, you know, uh, and, and different things in their life. People who have been raped. They have gone through molestation, you know, people who have uh, uh, been, been in accidents, uh, people who have been abused, 
You know, even people who have been, uh, have social anxiety disorders, you know, and I, I know quite a few people who have discomfort being in social settings. And it, again, these are different kinds of anxieties than the ones that I'm addressing. Uh, and so if you are a person that is being uh, plugged with those uh, type of anxieties and fears where you are getting unnervous and, you know, your, your body and your mind is starting to worry you too much about things in which there is no current or present danger, my advice for you is to seek counseling. Um, Proverbs 11 and 14 said that there is safety in the multitude of counselors. And so it is important uh, to get help. And we as a people are constantly exposed to these fears and dangers because we are taught to hide these things, to not talk about them, to not discuss them. And so the burden is on us as people who help to be confidential, to give people confidence where they, where they feel comfortable learning to express themselves, where they know we're going to do something about those people who have hurt them, or, or there can, something can be done about their uh, mental stress and worriness because of these conditions. So there is help out there for you. Be encouraged, uh, seek counseling, uh, seek uh, advice. And so at this time, family, I want to uh, save a little time. And, and I thank the platform, uh, uh, Sister uh, Martina, uh, our brother uh, uh, Kashad, as well as our Sister Rafaela. Thank you for considering me to share some information to the family. And again, I hope that this has been helpful. And now I'm going to bring on this time my brother, Maurice Shalim, and uh, praying that he's with us and can share some vital, some vital information about how preparedness helps to conquer fear. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Yoel. That was fantastic. Um, I wanted to, I don't see uh, Brother Shalim on, on, uh, on, the, um, on the chat here. If you are here, um, can you please let me know so I can unmute your mic? <laughs> And if he's not, I could fill in for him and talk about uh, some of the uh, prepared tactics that some of our people could utilize to help conquer uh, some of the yeah. current fears that are happening. Yeah. Is that yeah, you? So can you hear me clear? Okay, well, perfect. I kind of figured that might have been you. All right, fantastic. All right, I think I, think I had it muted. I didn't want to interrupt uh, my beloved Dr. Murray Yoel. No problem. <clears throat> I kind of figured. Let me just in unmute him. Might be him. All right, thank you. Yes. Mm, can I be heard clear? Yes. Oh, good. Awesome. I didn't want to um, interrupt Dr. Murray Yoel. Um, please forgive my voice. I got caught in some rain yesterday. Uh, I don't have COVID-19, just my sinus draining a little bit, family. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to give um, honor and praise to the creator of heaven and earth for blessing um, our host to provide this awesome platform so we can share this knowledge with our people. And um, that was an awesome presentation by um, Dr. Murray Yoel, and I'm honored that he um, thought enough of me to include me in his presentation. Um, there are not many that can come behind Dr. Murray Yoel. Um, as you all can see, that was a plethora of information he shared with us. Um, we all should go to whatever college and university that we were blessed to attend and ask them to upgrade our transcript, because I believe I beloved Dr. Morio L just elevated us to a doctorate degree based on the knowledge he shared us in class today. Um, forgive my voice, can you hear me clear? <clears throat> yes, we can hear you very clear. Thank you, thank you. Um, based on um, the facts that Dr. Morio L shared with us, um, one of the things he said that was so profound that a lot of us have taken as a cliche, um, um, he, is, um, he mentioned that people fear what they don't know. They are afraid of things they don't know or things they don't have an understanding of. And that's one of the main problems with our people, uh, a lack of information and a lack of knowledge. Um, you will see for the most part that our people are reactionary 
we are reactive instead of proactive. And normally, that reaction that we normally have is motivated by fear. We are also um, a people that will procrastinate. We wait till the last minute. We'll see the danger on the horizon, but we'll wait till the last minute before we take action. So we normally end up being on the tail end of the learning curve when it comes to responding to certain situations in our environment, um, certain situations we have to deal with. Um, as I've been blessed to state in the past, um, when you look at the facts of the coronavirus, um, whether it's man-made or not, um, that's actually not the important point. You see a lot of propaganda being put out. And um, the propaganda stirs and creates and supports fear. Um, that emotion that brought, um, Dr. Moore, your elder, just wonderfully taught us about. And when people are afraid, uh, they normally uh, um, throw logic out of the window and they normally make decisions based on the wrong emotion, that emotion being fear, the subject of the day's conversation. And you will see proof of that if you just go to any social media platform, especially in our community. The majority of our people are so focused on fear mongering and um, spreading conspiracy theories. And most of the conspiracy theories don't make a lick of sense if they would just stop and think and apply some logic. Uh, um, for, and Dr. Morial touched on it wonderfully. When you look at the facts of the coronavirus, it's mostly affecting people to have compromised immune systems and our beloved elders, our elders who are normally in a weakened health state in the first place. So this virus is going to cause a knowledge drain and a wisdom drain in our community if we in our community are not able to check it because it's putting our elders who contain certain knowledge, certain wisdom at risk. And then you'll see our younger generation promoting fear and, um, and um, propaganda that's been hyped up by the media, which is increasing the fear in our population that's most vulnerable, our elders. Some of our elders are not as well read because of the lack of education that was available to them when they were um, younger people upon the earth. So they don't have the resources or the means to go research and see if what you're sharing with them is factual or not. So you're actually increasing their fear, increasing their anxiety, which lowers their immune system. So you're making them more susceptible to become victims of this virus. So people that are doing that in our community are doing a great disservice to our community. And some of the people that are doing it are doing it um, on fear is the motivation. Fear is the emotion that's motivating them to do it in the first place because they don't have a clue. They haven't done any research. They just ran across some YouTube video, latched onto that as fact without researching any of it, without checking any of the sources of the information. And then they plaster the information across social media and exposing our elders and other uh, vulnerable members of our community to the virus by instructing them with fear and paralyzing them not to take action and lowering their immune system, making them more susceptible to the virus in the first place. And as Maura Yoel said, um, if you have some knowledge, that information can motivate you and cause you to relax so you can focus and meditate on solutions to the problem that you're facing if you can eliminate fear from the equation. And therein lies the problem in our community um, because we lack knowledge um, and because we lack, um, or let me use this terminology if I may. We are a people that have a fear of eldership. We are a people that have a fear of proper authority. And normally that fear is a result of the dysfunctional family structures that we as a people stem from. Because we as a people fear proper eldership and fear proper leadership and fear proper authority, we're normally in a state of rebellion against such. 
So when a problem comes down the pipeline that faces us, our community as a whole, there is a vacuum of leadership in our community before the problem even showed up on the horizon. We were already at a disadvantage as a people. We didn't have any um, trusted leaders, um, community organizers in our community that we could turn to that had enough trust, equity, and enough knowledge and enough wisdom to go get the facts for us, filter the facts through that wisdom and knowledge they've been blessed with, and then give us instructions on what to do, give us knowledge on how to survive the coming catastrophe. And, and, and all of that's based on fear. The foundation of that is fear. A lot of times that fear um, um, is not misplaced, as Mario L said, because so many times we placed ourselves under the leadership of, um, I'm going to use the word shysters. We placed ourselves under the leadership of shysters, of fakes, of con men and con women. And that left a bad taste in our mouth when it comes to leadership. So we fear being the victim of such con people again. So we fear authority and proper leadership. So we find ourselves out in the world trying to row the boat across the vast ocean called life by ourselves because we fear being connected to an organized group under proper eldership. Then when a catastrophe comes down the pipeline, we find ourselves in peril because we have no one to turn to for assistance. And that peril was, was, was caused or the foundation of the situation we find ourselves in was fear. A very deep, profound fear um, i like to share an incident with you. This past Monday, as an elder in the Murray in our community, I started counting how many phone calls I was receiving from people that were in distress in our community. And I counted. I'm only going to select one, 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 uh, um, one segment of the population that called me. I counted 15 phone calls from 15 single mothers in our community that were asking me, Moray, what to do? I'm a school cafeteria worker. The school is shut down. My children are at home. We're on self-quarantine. It's going to take three to four weeks for my first unemployment check to reach me. I haven't worked in two weeks, and I may have five days worth of food left in my home for me and my three children. That math does not work if you got four days before your first unemployment check arrives and you only got five days of food left in your house. That math does not work. Something's going to come up short. I said, did you check your local food bank? They told me they were swamped. The line runs two blocks is what they told me. They said, I was more than welcome to come down, but it's a long wait. Bring your lunch. She said, my reply to the lady was, what lunch? I'm calling you because I'm running short on food. These 15 sisters were the same sisters that I gave counsel and advice to back in February. I gave them instructions on what to do. Look. You as a single mother that's not under the covering, you're not connected to any organized group for mutual assistance. You are going to be the most vulnerable if this thing gets uglier than what it is. You need to prepare yourself. This is a viral, upper respiratory viral infection. If you can avoid contact with someone that's a carrier, you can avoid getting the virus. Therefore, you may have to self-quarantine yourself. Do you have enough food to self-quarantine yourself for a month or two? And their answer to a number was, no, I do not. Then I advise you to start doing so. Here we are today, this past Monday, I'm getting phone calls from the exact same people. Obviously, they didn't follow those instructions. Now they are afraid of hunger. What caused them to be afraid of hunger? They were afraid of placing themselves under some authority, someone else to tell them what to do. 
One of them verbally told me two years ago when I first had this conversation with her, Maury, I'm 37. I don't need nobody to tell me what to do. This past Monday, that same person called me saying she got four days of food left in her house by estimate. But when I told her what to do, she would not obey and buy the good counsel that I was blessed to give her. Fear is the cause of the situation she now finds herself in. Fear. So as Moray um, um, Yorel said, fear can be very destructive. You know, it also has a positive aspect, as he stated, because fear can motivate you to do what's right. But it's a combination. It's a recipe. Fear can only motivate you to do what's right, what is correct, what is right in a situation. If you first have the knowledge of what to do. If you don't have the knowledge of what to do, fear can't motivate you to take action based on that knowledge. So here we find ourselves um, in the situation. We as a people are at the bottom of the food chain, at the bottom of the learning curve, when times are good, we're at the bottom as a whole. So when, when, when we see something coming down the pipeline, some catastrophe coming down the pipeline, whether it be the hurricane season and you live in a hurricane zone, whether it be the blizzard season and you live in the Great Lakes region when it gets um, lake effect snow, you live in a blizzard zone. We see these catastrophes coming down the pipeline and most of us will be frozen with fear. We won't take any action. We don't have a game plan. We don't have an exit strategy. Whether you live in California in the mudslide zones and the forest fire zones, our people are always at the bottom of the totem pole. When times are good, we're at the bottom. So you can imagine when some catastrophe comes down the pipeline. And a lot of times, the reason we find ourselves in these situations is fear-based. It's fear-based. Even fear of what our peers are going to say if our peers see us receiving instructions from another adult, child, I thought you was grown. Child, why are you obeying that from them? Fear of being ostracized by our peers is still fear. And that fear can cause us not to make the correct decision that could potentially protect our families from harm. Fear from being ostracized by relatives. Right, fear, very powerful emotion. And, and as Murray said, it has a paralyzing effect. A lot of times we are afraid of the knowledge of what's coming down the pipeline. We have that, um, that old analogy of sticking our head in the sand like an ostrich. He sees danger, he bears his head in the sand. In other words, if I don't see it and I don't know about it, it doesn't exist. A lot of us go through life with that mentality. We don't want to know what's coming. Uh, uh, and it's because of a gripping, paralyzing fear. Right, but it's something we as a people must learn to overcome. We must learn to overcome. Um, the, the main thing to fear with this coronavirus, as it exists, the virus itself, is not the great danger to the majority of the population. The majority of the victims of the virus, if you have a healthy, a relatively healthy immune system, you will recover from the virus. It's those that are elderly with a compromised immune system that are at the greatest risk. The thing to fear the most is the economic impact that this virus could have if this viral season extends itself and the numbers get up uh, um, to a million or more in um, in North America, the economic impact. If the government becomes more draconian in their shutdowns and their quarantines, most of our people live check to check. So most of our people are going to have a very difficult time surviving if their job is unavailable for five or six months. That's going to be very difficult for a lot of our people. But then you can imagine. Go ahead, go ahead, sis. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. It's just that we're running up a bit a little behind Tom. You want to also give a little bit of time for some Q&A at the end? Let's um, do that. 
Oh, awesome. So one of the things that I wanted to ask is, uh, and then we have a couple more questions that I have written down from participants in you on YouTube as well. Uh, yes. So, uh, so what do you, what can we do to prepare? Uh, what can we do to prepare? Was that, did I hear your question correct? Yeah, that is, that is the question. Uh -huh. Right, right. Um, inside my covenant of families, I, as their elder, instruct every head of household to already have a minimum of a year supply of food and dry goods to have a long shelf life. Because you don't know what the future holds. You don't know what's coming down the pipeline. So a food supply is something that we as black folks should have already been prepared for. Unfortunately, once again, because of fear, unfortunately, we are a people that believe it is a constitutional right for others to feed us. My father educated me a long time. Others feed us because it is profitable for them to feed us. The second it no longer becomes profitable for them to feed us, they will cease from feeding us. Then what you going to do? Then some fear will really set in. But if you already have six months to a year supply of food and all of a sudden the grocery store shelves are empty, you can eliminate the fear of where's my next meal going to come from for me and my children. That fear doesn't exist in your household because you got six months. The disaster may not last six months. So if the economy recovers, you are good. You didn't miss no meals. So, so to answer your question, what to do to prepare? In the present situation, if you are not exposed to the virus, the virus is of little consequence to you. So can you and your household self-quarantine yourself for a period of time until this pestilence pass? So uh, uh, having your family prepared to self-quarantine. And if, and if the theories are correct, that it is um, residual radiation from the new technology that's being rolled out, that's causing this virus, if that theory is correct, and I see so many people that have brought into that theory, I'm not saying yay or nay, I could care less. If that theory is correct, imagine what's gonna come down the pipeline in the future. This may be just, so, this may be just a dress rehearsal for something worse as they, as they continue to roll this new technology out in other cities and areas, if that theory is correct. So, so, yeah, we got to start. And a short, ver a short answer to your awesome question is we need to start educating ourselves and becoming proactive. Stop reacting once it's already knocking. Once the, once the catastrophe is already knocking at the front door. It's too late to react then. You should have been proactive before it even came over the horizon. Got it. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Shaleen. Uh, sure. I appreciate that answer. And uh, we have a question from the YouTube uh, for Dr. Yoel. Um, Gail wanted to know, uh, you made a list of phobias in the beginning of the conversation. Yes. And uh, she just kind of picked up, you know, towards the end. If you could quickly just go over that list of um, uh, list of phobias, common responses that were discussed very early on in the in the conversation. If you can just go over that list, just really quick, so we can give a little bit more time for other people if they have any questions. Uh, sure, that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, some of the uh, list of phobias are social phobias, such as uh, agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is the fear of open spaces. Um, it's when you actually are in a room and you feel anxiety and stress when you don't see an exit, a way out. And that's when some people have a fear of going into uh, movie theaters or large rooms and they don't see an exit. They begin to uh, uh, feel anxiety, overwhelming anxiety and overwhelming fear. You got um, acrophobia which is the uh, fear of heights, people that go over bridges. Um, I had a sister call me not too long ago. She uh, uh, almost parked in the middle of the bridge, got out, and she called her husband. Her husband had to come and drive the car the rest of the way over the bridge. She was suffering from acrophobia, which is the fear of heights. Uh, people like that also are, uh, don't like to drive, uh, get in elevators and, and things of that nature. Uh, you have uh, Tero Murk. Uh, Phenobia, which is the uh, fear of flying. You have uh, claustrophobia, which is the fear of enclosed spaces. You have 
entomophobia, which is the fear of insects, and you have iphidophobia, which is the fear of snakes. Um, you have some other phobias that exist, um, and a lot of those are uh, some modern phobias. And so uh, that's a list of phobias, and what I could do is uh, put some of them in the chat and uh, where you can find them and uh, things of that nature. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so I've given permission folks to talk. Anybody having anyone has any other questions uh, that you would like to ask right now? And if you do, you can um, unmute your mic. I see Stella that you have unmute your mic. Do you have a question? Oh, sorry. I have a question. Okay. okay. So, okay. It's unmuted. So how do you encourage someone who has other psychological problems, like who's schizophrenic, but how do you encourage them in times where they are going through maybe like some um, delusional thoughts and um, things like that, instead of like not telling them, you know, what you like, you don't see a person in the room. It's not, it's not real it's not here like instead of like not not diminishing what they're feeling but encouraging them through it yes go ahead yes that's a that's a, a that's a great uh, question first and foremost um I, i've worked with people that have uh, schizophrenia uh, and different type of uh uh you know disorders of that nature for a very long time uh, many of them uh were beyond uh you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, some of them uh, had to be placed on medication in order to uh, cause a balance. Uh, I'll give you one thing that I'm working on. I, I need to write a book on this, and it's called uh, reality-based thinking. Uh, reality-based thinking is, and I'll give you a technique that is used in reality-based thinking. Uh, let's say someone is uh, posed with uh, auditory hallucinations or visual hallucinations and they're about to have an episode if you can place a rubber band on the wrist of that person and you got teach them to feel the trigger before it happens what they could do with that rubber band is pull the rubber band and pop it on themselves as hard as that as they can and that sometimes helps to bring people back to a reality-based thinking um, that technique also works uh, with people who get easily unfocused uh, people who even go through some of the beginning stages of phobia, um, that initial thought, getting back into reality-based thinking kind of triggers uh, a, a sense of knowledge and a sense of courage. And so uh, getting cognitive behavioral therapy is another uh, a, a thing that helps people who are, are suffering from auditory or visual hallucinations and schizophrenia. Uh, they want to get some cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, because in therapy, it'll help them to learn reality-based thinking techniques, as well as other uh, behavioral uh, techniques to help them to stay uh, reality-based and, and not really give in to too much of those uh, hallucinations. Okay. Okay. But it's, so say at the moment you don't have a rubber band and you're dealing with somebody who is, like I said, having thoughts about, you know, someone's going to kill me and, you know, saying things of that sort. Can you, like, can you jump in and say, no, no one's going to kill you? Or do you kind of play into it in a way? Like, I'm not saying to lie to them, but is there, do you kind of throw a white lie to make it better? Or do no, you, 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 how do you never do that? Do that. Uh, you never do that. Uh, you, have, you have to be empathetic in your approach always. Um, empathy will actually create the bridge to getting across to helping them. So in that instance, and I've dealt with that before, you kind of get a person to settle down for a second because sometimes worrying and be getting fidgety, they can either, uh, they can become to begin to cause harm to themselves or to others. And so you want to get them uh, calm, try to get their attention, and you want to let them know you understand what they're going through. You know, not that it's real, uh, not that it's not real. You want them to know that you understand and you're here to help them to, to refocus. And then you just try your best to uh, walk them through their situation to understanding that what they're going through is temporary. You know, say you are seeing uh, 10 people in front of you that's not there. You let that person know, you understand that they may be seeing 10 people. 
you understand that it may be causing them to feel nervous. But look, you know, show them through uh, an actual uh, physical, visual uh, presentation that see the people aren't here. Bring them back to reality-based thinking. Start asking them what they feel. Ask them what color is, are their pants? What color is their shirt? You bring, you redirect their mind back to things that are real and that helps their mind to, to be distracted, to be less distracted about their audio, their visual hallucinations. And uh, visual hallucinations are sometimes easier if they're more easy to redirect than uh, audio, auditorial hallucinations. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Great question. I know we are um, a little bit over time, but I did have um, one question um, for Dr. Yoel, um, and this is Kishab. In regards to um, laymen or untrained people that may be engaging with family or friends um, that may have what we believe or what we may see from our, uh, or even what they may say, as far as um, any kind of issue they may be having, you know, sometimes the tendency is you want to help. Uh, what do you recommend for people who are not professionally trained in being of assistance to families and friends um, based upon either their diagnosis or what you may understand to be something that's not necessarily, um, something that's not necessarily right. How do you recommend or should they at all um, put themselves in a position to help? What is your recommendation for them? Uh, that's an excellent question, uh, Kashab. Very uh, excellent question. Um, I, I always teach empowerment and solution. I'm very solution based. And so uh, there's no such thing as not having uh, the ability to do something and you don't need a degree to do, uh, to do something. Um, I would encourage someone in that stance and I, and I have in the past encouraged people to, uh, to learn from, get, to get in touch with those that are skilled in those areas um, and to sit up under them. Um, there are free, there are, there are uh, uh, counseling uh, community centers, there are mental health uh, community centers in your areas. Go to those centers and get information. Um, go to those centers and you can even ask to, uh, you know, to do what they call, uh, you know, learn training, you know, where you can do practicums and you can sit up under people. Uh, watch videos of professionals. You know, uh, uh, this goes back to this whole uh, thing of conquering fears with knowledge. So get knowledge any way you can and empower yourself, uh, but from those that are authority, who are authorities in that area, who are knowledgeable in those areas uh, that you are seeking. Uh, books help, but I, I kind of stray away from a lot of books because what you read is not always what you will experience and encounter. Um, I worked in a psych hospital for about three years, uh, one of the largest psych hospitals in Philadelphia, and even some of the things I learned in school didn't explain some of the things I encountered. And so experience is really a, a, a true educator. And so I would uh, say in, in conclusion to basically, uh, to get in touch with your, uh, mental, your, your community mental health agencies. Uh, they give out free information there. Um, and to do some um, practicums, go into these places and ask, if, you know, tell them you're learning and you're experiencing this and you would like to learn. Um, I have a daughter who's uh, suffering from autism. Autism wasn't my strength. What I went and did is I got certified as a behavior analyst on, on autistic behavior, you know, because I wanted to learn how to interact with my daughter a lot, a lot better. And so uh, just empowering yourself with education. Doctor, are you okay? Are you still there? We can't seem to hear you. Doctor, are you still there?
So it looks like we lost him. Um, so I just wanted to say a quick thank you for um, coming out uh, today to our day five. Um, unfortunately, we got cut off a little bit. So me and I had some sort of uh, technical difficulties, but I wanna encourage everybody, if you have not, uh, this is your first time here, we do have the replays of the very first few four days. I will post the link here on the chat uh, so that you can go and watch either on our Facebook page or our YouTube page. Uh, and I encourage for those of you who haven't shared, share with your family and your friends, there is still time for uh, to sign up for the 30 day. And, um, and I hope you guys have an amazing day, okay? very much and we will be back on tomorrow.